I had done a mirror glaze on some ugly soaps from the Taylor Swift line and Georgia May had wanted to do something with them as well because she wanted to try the mirror glaze technique. But you know, then life happened and Christmas and holidays and all the crazy things. And so she didn't get to do them. So that's what we are doing today. So there's your big old spoiler. But before I talk more about the glaze and the process and all the things, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. And you are here for day 258 of 365 days of soap. And yeah, we have a little break, like shockingly, right before the holiday season. And uh, Georgia May had time to try her hand at mirror glazes. Now, mirror glazes, if you remember from when I did it, it's something that I have been interested in, but have never really found the point of, um, just for the overall loss of the product and all of the things. I've always been kind of like, no, thank you. But so I did it and I showed you how to do it. It's all about the consistency and the texture of the batter and all that fun stuff. But Georgia May wanted to try her hand at it too. So that's what you were getting today. Now let's go check out the video and you can look at her process and we can talk about that, you know, in the video. And then I'll tell you what she ultimately decided with these uh, mirror glazes. So we've got a kind of little bitty baby video here today, which is cool because, you know, it's busy. And so when we have shorter videos, that sometimes works better for my schedule. So yay. Now, Georgia May wanted to try the mirror glaze soap. So this is what we are doing today. We are showing you Georgia May's mirror glaze. Now I did a mirror glaze, oh, I don't know, like a month or so ago, I want to say. And... It was cool. It was like a river rock, you know, thing. And we talked about the consistency of the uh, the batter for all of that and, you know, how thick everything should be. And the assumption was George May watched the video before doing this because actually I didn't talk to her about this at all and talk to her about the right texture and consistency of any of it. I just said, yeah, you should do the mirror glaze, do that thing. And so, you know, that's what she's doing today. Now, the colors that she's working with here, she's going for like a lotus flower blossom pour thing with her mirror glaze. And this is cold process soap. I did not show the mixing of the line, the doing of the things, but this is a cold process batter. Very, very thin right now. And if this doesn't thicken up, she's probably going to end up with some problems in the pour. Now, as I mentioned in the previous mirror glaze video. Um, I mean, as I've mentioned before in lots of videos, really, it's all about the texture. It's all about the, the not the texture, but the, uh, the thickness of the batter, really. With almost every um, technique that you would ever do, any design technique that you would ever do for soaping, ultimately, it all comes down to the fluidity of the batter. If your batter's too thin or too thick or whatever, for whatever technique that you're doing, um, it will make or break your pour. And she's actually adding in some white mica that we got. I think she's probably, I think it's Vanna White from Mad Micas. And I think the only reason that she's doing it is because we never, ever, ever have white mica, like literally ever. And so maybe she's doing that because, oh, look, fun. I've never used white mica because I think she's literally never used white mica because we don't ever stock it because we have kale and clay. So why would you need white mica? But you know, I had a weird whatever and I think he was on sale or something. So I'm like, sure, I'll pick up some white mica. Sure, why not? 
And yeah, this is ready to be poured. So let's see what she does with it. Now she has cut up uh, more of the uh, failed folklore batch because damn, that was a really big batch. of soap that totally, totally went sideways. It was rising and it was accelerating and it was thick and clumpy and gross and it was not fun. But the soap itself, it still performs really well. It's just ugly. So I had to remake it. So that's what she is working on. She's using for her base soaps here, which is cool. I like the big brightness of her colors. Um, I'm wondering though, she's putting her super colorful layer on now, which is interesting because you actually need multiple layers for a mirror glaze to really work well. Oh, this is fun. I, I like this, taking the heat gun to it to move some batter around in ways that she wanted. That's that's a smart idea. I love it. That's brilliant. That's Yes, do that for sure. That's awesome. But do that with a batch that's actually uh, thinner, or thicker rather, because this, this batter is pretty thin. And when the batter is this thin for something like a mirror glaze, you're really running into the problem of it not sticking and creating like a weight, like actual depth to the, oh, that's beautiful. <sighs> She's like, don't go any further. And that's, that's, that's the issue with a, a, a batter that's too thin. Yeah, that's, that's what you're going to be dealing with. Um, it's not going to really stick to the, oh, oh God. <laughs> to the soap very well. Um, so you, it should be thicker than this. She's she's literally like soaping right now at an emulsion. That's how thin the batter is. So I would have worked it up a little bit more to get closer to, I don't know, like a mid thin trace, um, somewhere right in the middle between thin and medium, whatever that means. Right. But just so it has the ability to yes, still move, but not, just all slide right off because there's no there's no weight to it. This is more like a, a thin like a water consistency and really you do want more of a of an oil consistency. I don't know that that's really making any sense but this is thin batter is the point of all of that. So if she had done just slightly thicker batter I don't think she would have had that problem but again she's playing and learning the process right now and so She's figuring this out as she goes. And see, as it's thickened up a little bit, you see how it holds its form really well there on you know the new soap that, that's there. So the soap, just by nature of sitting in the container, it's starting to, to thicken up to really the, the proper consistency for all of it. And you know ultimately, it's going to work out and be awesome because you just kind of continue to layer your soaps, your, your, your soap batter onto this until it has you know, enough thickness, but there's something that I would be concerned about with this in that she is soaping at, a, at an emulsion and very, very thin batter. Um, since there's not a lot of batter that's going on to, and not a lot of soap that's going on to the existing soap that she's pouring onto, right? It's a very thin layer and that you run the risk of put, of having soda ash, through the entirety of the pour, right? Because soda ash is uh, essentially the result of like the the sodium hydroxide, the lye solution hitting air, and it creates soda ash. Now, well, this is nothing but raw soap batter, and usually you only experience soda ash, you know, on the top of your bars or whatever, but this is essentially, she's just pouring the top of the bar. So I am concerned that she might end up with a bar, like a design that's nothing but soda ash. And so, you know, we'll see. So far these colors are super beautiful and hopefully she covers them and does the thing and we can, you know, check out what they look like, you know, overnight. Now I came into the soap shop a couple days later and saw this. And so I don't know if she, covered these or spritzed these, maybe she spritzed them. I'm going to go based on what that looks like that she did not cover them or put them in the oven. 
uh, to gel, and that's that's the end result. That's what you're 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 dealing with with a uh, with a mirror glaze. See, that's that was a very cute you know thing that we get to continue to pour in though. So that's awesome. But yeah, so you're dealing with a whole lot of soda ash with this, and. In a lot of cases, soda ash can be steamed off, soda ash can be washed off, soda ash can be, uh, you can put alcohol on it and it can be, you know, wiped off. But again, since this is such a thin layer of soap, that soda ash actually exists through the entire pattern. And so, no matter what we do, the vibrance of those colors are never going to come out and be as beautiful as they were with the wet soap. And so you ultimately are not going to have you know, a mirror glaze with this. The shine is not going to come back because they were not protected from these elements, because they were poured a little bit thin, and because, um, you know, n there wasn't a secondary heat cycle, we didn't see pop them, no nothing like that. So that is a risk that is run with, you know, mirror glazes, and really the trick to all of it. Again, you're, you're working with your batter consistency, but you're also, trying to, you know, get enough heat or protecting it well enough that you're going to not have the soda ash. And ultimately, this is another way to sort of reveal the pattern as much as you can. Spritz a whole bunch of rubbing alcohol on it, let it sit for a couple minutes before you then rub it off. And, you know, it, it, it can it can do some things, but it's never going to take it back to the beauty that those bars were when they were fully wet. So ultimately these are still really beautiful bars, but they're never going to have that cool mirror sheen to them just because, again, thin soap batter, if you do not gel it or seep pop it or protect it from developing that soda ash, i.e. soaping at a thinner trace, I mean, that's cool. That still looks amazing. But, you know, it's a cool first attempt for a mirror glaze and I think it's really beautiful. So I don't exactly remember what the actual text was from Georgia May when this was all said and done, but I did text her and I was like, hey, I didn't ask you how you uh, how the mirror glaze went and what you think of it. And she texted something back to the effect of uh, tedious, annoying, and a waste of product. And so that was her overall you know, take on it too. And I, I kind of agree with that. Like I, I do understand that it can definitely be a waste of product for sure. Um, but you know, it's pretty. With hers, again, it, it was poured at too light of a trace. And so with such a thin layer of like new soap going over the top, ultimately it all ended up with soda ash. So that beautiful, those beautiful bright colors that she had planned, they didn't really work out. But Still great soap, still works really nicely. And if you are interested in them, yeah, you can find them as a scratch and dent uh, soap on uh, soapandclay.com. If you are interested in more soapy antics and all of the things to see what we do for the next 100 plus days of 365 days of soap, you could subscribe. That would be cool. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thanks. You're cool and I appreciate you. I am done for today, so I'm out of here. I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Bye.